one could be a glutton for sex, for war or for power over others meaning he is hoarding onto himself, by expanding his capacity, a perceived physical pleasure, because he feels unworthy and, therefore, he fears there will not be enough of whatever is the object of his excessive appetite. Gluttony is a form of self-punishment, because any excessive intake, such as of food, sex, or power, often proves to be the very thing which leads to the destruction of the glutton. It is this excess, beyond reasonable need, which is not assimilated within the being, but is actually stored, which then produces the effect remember the law of cause and effect, of actually devouring and destroying its host. It is this hoarding of energy beyond the ability to assimilate and integrate it within his being, which the glutton has trapped and which, as is the nature of all energy, will seek to free itself from its static state in order to move and remain alive, even if it means the destruction of its host. Yes, this excessive trapped energy becomes much as a parasite upon the glutton. You see, Keelas, the integrity of the energy deteriorates, if it is accumulated, stored and kept stagnant or static for an inordinate period of time. Just as it is the nature of stored food or energy, such as fuel, to deteriorate, if it is not somehow preserved. And even though the life of the food or fuel energy is extended by your various preservation processes, the quality or integrity, because of the stagnation or dormancy state of the food or fuel, is still usually lessened. If you know God slash and your father will provide all that you ever need to sustain in his service, why would you need to excessively hoard any energy within you which is a part of the spirit of life? The correct answer, precious ones, is that you do not need to overconsume the needs of your spirit or being to sustain you, if the father within is acknowledged and accepted, as your true and limited power. You must know within your very being that you will always have what you need to sustain in his service. Now let's please make this clear to you ones who may be now in a panic wondering, if your body, which you perceive carries more weight upon it than you would desire, is the result of gluttony. First of all, many of you underestimate what is your ideal weight. The image constantly fed to you of thin, thin, thin is in has caused many of you much unnecessary preoccupation with this desire for a thinner you. This is vanity which we will discuss in depth later within your deadly sins. Each one of you is gifted with a different skeletal frame for your body. If you are small boned and petite in stature, then naturally you will need to carry less weight than one who is large boned and petite in stature. When not tampered with, most of you were born with excellent natural functioning metabolic mechanisms for maintaining an ideal weight, for you. Many of you simply eat much more than your body needs to sustain in healthy harmony. Gluttony, then is excessive appetite and desire for the hoarding of much more of anything which is a form of energy, than what one can properly assimilate in his experience. You each must learn to recognize, whether your transgression against self is because of vanity or gluttony, both or neither. For example, when one is a glutton for punishment, this means he hoards upon himself, because of lack of self-honor and self-worth continuous, excessive and consecutive experiences which cause him undue stress and unhappiness. He becomes a glutton of the excessive repeat of his own self-created experience of victimhood. Gluttony really becomes a mindless behavior in that the glutton experiences a state of trance or transfixation upon whatever is the object of his gluttony. He is hiding from his pain of feeling unworthy, and by the mindless hoarding he becomes numb to his feelings. This, as you may now see, is much the same desire to hide from one's feelings of being inadequate, unlovable or otherwise undeserving of life of one who is addicted to drugs or alcohol. You now within your society have many young men and women who feel so unworthy that they will repeatedly mindlessly gorge themselves and then in disgust with themselves, they will vomit it all away. Ones have termed this addiction behavior bulimia. It has become the new disease of your young people who strive to be, and can never measure up to some physical or other image of false perfection that either they have been given or that they themselves have adopted. What is the difference between one who is bulimic and one who eats more than he slash she needs and retains the excessive weight upon the body? Both are eating to fill an emptiness within, often feeling unloved by self or others. The bulimic though can hide his slash her food addiction from the world by maintaining a slender physique, thereby experiencing both gluttony and vanity. The one who overeats and gains excessive stored weight is experiencing an addiction to food for a variety of reasons, but most often the reasons revolve around filling the emptiness within and or to give a protective shield of excess weight against emotional attack by self or others. 
this one too can feel thing, and get on a treadmill of overeating and thereby trying various programs of dieting formulas, diets, exercise, subliminal tapes and other so-called miracle programs to lose the weight. Until both, food addicted types, are able to recognize and come to terms with, why they use food to fill a need, and also learn what that need actually is, the one addicted will not be able to cure his slash her addiction. Do you see, dearest ones, these sins we are defining, for you are really the symptoms of the Antichrist cancer within you, devouring, confining and limiting your creative spirit of life. Your spirit is fighting the absolute agony of your self-created chains of creative limitation. You must now recognize these symptoms and ask the Father within you to give you His power, His wisdom, and His love to help you cast off these chains of limitation upon your creative spiritual unfoldment. For, lust. Lo and behold, precious ones, it has been this one sin upon yourselves and upon the Father within which has brought your species to near destruction by the unmerciful Antichrist. This one corruption of the Father's love, which is the love of the Spirit of life within all of creation has brought to you disease of your bodies and emptiness and unfulfillment upon your souls. Let us define lust. 1. Bodily sexual appetite. 2. Excessive sexual appetite, especially that seeking of immediate or ruthless satisfaction. 3. An overwhelming desire, a lust for power. 4. To have passionate or inordinate desire. Again, we are defining a behavior which is not only excessive and overwhelming but also depleting to the spirit of life of God within you. Lust is adversarial to the God slash Adam within you, because, if is an unnatural, excessive desire allowed experience only upon your third dimensional physical plane. The poison seeds of the feelings of lust have been cleverly planted, molded, encouraged and harvested by the Antichrist to replace and destroy what is true godly unconditional love of the spirit of all life. You ones have become so confused by what is your desire for sexual activities that you believe it now to be your expression of love for your mate. Even those who know they lust and that it is not love, still eventually confuse their lusty desire, as a part of their love for one with whom they enjoy sharing companionship. Lust, for physical sexual release, is lust, dear ones, whether it be for a one night stand, oh my, or done with one who you consider to be your love mate. For a more thorough description of the corruption of your spiritual creative potential through the abuse of sexual behavior, please read or reread the laws of God and creation already set forth to print. So then, the term lust represents a natural, excessive physical desire, usually for sexual union, but also one can lust for power or money or other things of your material illusion. By holding onto yourself these unnatural to spirit, desires you will simply become heavily attached to your illusion of reality and will therefore remain heavy from the darkness of your ignorance. If there is one thing that we might encourage you to desire, and it need not be unnatural or excessive, that would be your desire to know and serve the light of true godness within you and all that is. 5. Wrath. Wrath is defined in your dictionary, as, 1. Extreme or violent rage. 2. Intense anger, rage, fury. 3. Any action of vengeance. And vengeance slash revenge means, 1. To inflict punishment, injury, or loss in return for the same. 2. A means of avenging oneself or another. Now understand the difference between what is wrath and what is anger, because the two are often linked, rightfully so, except that wrath represents a much more intense emotional state of rage, and one who is wrathful seeks to actively avenge his rage, in some way, against the one slash ones who he perceives maliciously wronged him or her ones he loves. So let us define anger, a feeling of strong displeasure and antagonism directed against the cause of an assumed wrong or injury. So you see, anger itself directed at self or another is an emotion of displeasure because of witnessing, experiencing or being the object of a real or perceived wrong. To feel anger at self, for actions taken, or not taken, against self or another, more often than not begins with simple impatience which, if not resolved or released, then becomes frustration, and finally will turn to anger and then possibly wrath, if recognition of truth is not achieved through the knowledge of wisdom of the Father God slash Adam within. For example, many of you ones become most impatient, when you perceive your time is being wasted by actions or delays caused, in your perception, by another. You oftentimes are so busy rushing around with self-importance, with the idea, time is money or some such thought, that any unplanned infringement upon your perceived valuable time causes you great distress and impatience. 
Many of you have become so caught up in your self-importance that you just find it hard to patiently wait for anything or anyone. Are there times when ones deliberately make you wait on them because of their perceived self-importance? Of course. But you see you must learn to know the difference and, in any case, you are the one who suffers when you allow yourself to feel impatient, because the longer you hold it, the more uncomfortable you become by getting frustrated and eventually angry and possibly even wrathful. If for example, one is continuously late, when he makes appointments of time with you, or others, recognize first that he has the problem, whether it be just inability to plan his time properly or deliberate infringement on another because of perceived self-importance. By understanding what the actual problem or circumstance is with the other, through accessing the knowledge and wisdom of the Father within you, you then can respond with integrity by bringing your observations about the circumstances of the delay directly up with the one who is excessively late. You may actually be surprised to find that they are most apologetic and thankful for the truth, and you may have assisted the beginning of their recovery from what is their problem. This is also what is termed actual constructive criticism in that you wisely recognize a problem and instead of internalizing it within or condemning the other, you offer them the truth about the circumstances, and perhaps even suggestions of how to correct the problem. Criticism, on the other hand, is one of the most common negative offshoots of holding to self-feelings of impatience, frustration and anger. By being critical of another, one is essentially condemning them and the behavior, action or performance based solely on arrogant opinion of what is perfection, to elevate their own feelings of inferiority, and not to help correct a problem, whether real or perceived. Also, many of you ones are your own worst enemies by being entirely too self-critical about all you are and do, condemning self always to feeling inferior and worthless. Stop it, dear ones, you are each carrying within you the spirit of life, God slash Eden slash creation. If you are not pleased with how you handled a particular situation, whatever it may be, then don't condemn yourself, bless the experience, learn the lesson, honor yourself and your courage, and make the adjustments necessary to continue enjoy the discovery and utilization of your spiritual creative potential within. Now, to feel angry because of a true injustice perpetrated against you or one you love is a signal to the Father within that you feel helpless, during those moments of anger, and perhaps you actually are, to set to right an action already committed against you or one you love. You must first release your anger to God slash Eden within before it either internalizes and festers within you or it turns up in degree to what is wrath. What you must do to release your anger is to recognize that the act against you or another is done, and that you participated in the manifestation of this act or crime against you for some lesson you needed. So the quicker you are able to come to understanding about what is done, you can begin to confer with the Father within to gain the knowledge and wisdom of truth to find out why you have chosen to be a victim and what must just fully and logically be done with the perpetrator against you. Whatever the degree of crime against the laws of God and the creation then, so too must the punishment be given also within the laws of God and creation. If one murders or rapes another, then the verdict of punishment must be given in level-headed logic and wisdom according to the law of God and creation, not wrathful vengeance according to your will of fury or wrath. For example, within the Pleiades star system, there are several planets occupied by your Pleiadian brothers and sisters. Although crimes against the laws of God and creation are now quite rare in the Pleiades, when they do occur, the ones committing same are actually sent to a prison planet of sorts, in separation from the God law abiding ones, and also segregated by sex, so that reproduction is not possible. This is the wise and logical punishment given by God's directive to his beloved children of Pleiades. The rest of Pleiades society is thereby kept in relative peace, balance and harmony. The ones on the prison planet have freedom upon only the planet and must earn their survival without the more modern conveniences of Pleiadian society. Most spend the rest of that lifetime upon the prison planet, but if you are occasionally returned to society depending on the nature of their crime and how well they have recognized their sin and are willing to offer compensatory retribution to the victims of their crime or to Pleiadian society in general. Following is a quote from, and they called his name Emmanuel, I am Sananda. You have heard it been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, exercise justice according to the natural law of creation, so that you find the verdict in logic and wisdom, 